Hey, Tommy, what cars are you looking forward to seeing in the next, let's say, two years? The pair. The pair. What is the pair? It's. I'm just reading about it for the first time, yeah. actually. Uh, you remember Fisker? Yeah. There's a new model called the pair. Wait. Fisker's doing a pair? They're doing a pair. Apparently it's an acronym for something. Personal Electronic Automotive Revolution. Oh, I hate cars that are acronyms. That's what is all, called the those pair? Those are all, always people movers. I like, I like the pair because whenever I'm seeing like a movie and they're trying to disguise the Apple logo on a computer, they usually turn it into a pair. So I thought that was a funny bit of, bit of trivia there. Well, guys, in this podcast, we're going to do a bunch of things. Uh, we're going to talk about the cool cars that I actually got to be hands-on with them, maybe sneak in a few trucks as well at the Chicago Auto Show because these are the up and coming. I'll tell you the star of that show, Tommy. Uh, we're also gonna be talking about cars that we've had at the office recently. Uh, you've been driving the bejesus out of- No, no, don't, don't say it. No? No. You don't wanna say what it is? No, don't say it. We gotta keep it a surprise because if you say it, everyone's gonna click out. Well, I was gonna say uh, the Tahoe- don't Oh yeah, you can say that one. That was <laughs> I'm not, fine. I'm not gonna say the other one because people might click out. <laughs> You'll have to wait and see. And of course, we're gonna do a Roman's rant. Okay. All right. Uh, so uh, let's get started. Uh, so I just got back with Andre from the Chicago Auto Show, uh, and they unveiled this. Tommy, get this. They unveiled the brand new Bronco. Are you ready for it, Raptor? Yeah, Andre actually saw it a couple weeks ago. That he was flown out to Michigan, probably. I don't know where. Where did they take him? Michigan. Uh, I don't know. I think it was think Vegas. It, oh, maybe it was Vegas. But they showed him the new uh, Bronco Raptor, and then you got to see it again at the Chicago Auto Show in person. So what did you think? Well, I got to do the walk around with the chief engineer. And, you know, here's the thing. Like, you know, we've been doing this now for, what, 12 years. Uh, and chief engineers uh, are an interesting breed, Tommy, because some of them uh, know everything about the car, and some of them know everything about the spreadsheet. Okay, and, and what did this guy know? He knew a lot about the car. Ooh. Yeah, so what I mean the spreadsheet is, at some point, I think a chief engineer's job, and I don't know if, I mean, maybe they just bring out different chief engineers depending on, you know, who had media training. Uh, but uh, the chief engineer uh, in this vehicle knew the important things. He was a fan of ours, watched our videos, so... Thank you for watching. Uh, and by the way, Tommy, what do you think of the new setup here? Uh, people have noticed that we've kind of uh, gotten past COVID and we're much more intimate. It's a little uncomfortable. Looking at each <laughs> I other? I don't know if I like it. So what we did, if you're listening to the podcast via Spotify or Apple Music, is that we had our desk kind of in a V and now they are pushed together so we're facing each other. It's a little uncomfortable. Yeah, I don't know if I should look at you or the I camera. Don't, I don't know what the pre the protocol is here. I know. And then if we have a third person, we can put them at the end of the table. Oh, that would just be too much. Yeah, too much. Jeez. Right? Anyway. So I'm kind of befuddled by the setup. Anyway, so let's talk about the Bronco Raptor, right? So I had a chance to chat with the chief engineer, uh, and uh, he knew a lot about it. Uh, and he kind of showed me the differences between the regular big boy Bronco, right, which is um, probably the first edition Sasquatch with the 35s. Uh, and now, um, you want me to just hit the highlights? Go for it. Okay, so first of all, only in the four-door. Yep. Okay, and first, first Ford Bronco to come standard, get this, with 37-inch tires. That's crazy to me. Yeah. 37s, yeah. wow, from the factory. From the factory. And then, of course, uh, I'm sure all of you Ford fans out there were hoping that they'd stick a big old coyote in, but they didn't. Yeah, that's the one thing that I think people are a little little on the fence about. So the standard uh, Bronco's got like the little four-cylinder, and then it's got the twin-turbo V6. And this one has a slightly bigger twin-turbo V6, so it's a 3-liter versus a 2.7, um, and they're targeting over 400 horsepower out of it. So, um, I mean, that's very cool, and they put a lot of work into the exhaust on this Bronco Raptor, which is pretty neat. But I do think they probably could have gotten um, a little bit more buzz with, with a Coyote or, or, a, or a V8. And get this, it's got shark gills on the side of the... Uh, <laughs> Looking at that's that. That's how you can tell. Well, the easiest way you can tell is, of course, if, if you can't tell the difference between 35 and 37s, which is pretty obvious, but let's say you can, all you do is look at those fenders. The fenders stick out, like, I want to say, like, six inches, maybe. No, they put a lot of work into the suspension of this vehicle. Andre also did a great interview with um, some of the, the, the chassis teams. And it's got uh, Fox Live Valve 3.1 internal bypass semi-active dampers. And, of course, when you add a .1 in, in the name, it's got to be better. And it's got a special mode. Oh, yeah? What's the special it's mode? It's a desert running mode. Oh. A la Raptor. Doesn't ours already have a Baja mode? What's more Baja than Baja? This one is apparently, according to the chief engineer, <laughs> it's the... the, 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 the 
Mows are all specially tuned to work with the bigger shocks and the bigger tires. So now, special modes uh, and a bigger screen. The thing that I always thought was a little befuddling, right, is that it's, so it's 9.8 inches wider than, than the Raptor, or than the, than the Bronco, than the base Bronco, which is enormous, right? And it's so wide, it's got the marker lights. Now there's a couple ways you can accomplish width. You can do it in the fenders, so you can kind of push out the sheet metal. They did push out the wheels. Yeah. Well, I'm talking about the fenders, though, right? Right. Because you have to cover the wheels. You can't just right. make the wheels they, wide. They gave it a wider stance. And you can push out the fenders, which which they did, which is good. I think that that's really good. Uh, and then you can also add, like, the overriders, right? You can add the, the little wide body flares. And I think they should have pushed out the fenders more and gone a little bit less crazy with the flares because when the flares are painted black, they kind of look like someone stuck some pool noodles on the side of the of the Bronco. I would go with like uh, Dumbo ears. Dumbo ears. That's, yeah, that's a good one. That's an old. That, that's <laughs> very my, 1960s. I'm, I'm dating myself there. <laughs> but you know what I mean. They're just they're, they're they're very wide. It looks like. Well, they're also not body colored. So yeah, yeah. you know what it looks like. What? I saw this thing online. Uh, and it was like this joke, and I hate to say it, but it does look a little bit like this, where someone took one of those kiddie pools, yeah. and they, they cut out the, the surrounding of the kiddie pool, <laughs> yeah. and then they turned those into fender flares. They're just absurdly wide. And I'm glad that they changed the actual sheet metal, but, like, they, they should have changed the sheet metal a little more. Yeah, you know, um, look, this is going to be unobtainium, right? I believe, if I remember correctly, and I didn't talk to the engineer about this, but the way they're rolling it out is they're giving... Current Bronco reservation holders, right, the ability to upgrade to a Bronco wrap there. I think that's how it's happening. Uh, and uh, it's going to be the one we bought was 63000 This is going to be much more expensive. Do, do they have pricing yet? Starts uh, at uh, 69995 Yeah, so seventy k and then goes up from there. Um, so, I mean, you know, obviously it's meant to compete with the Jeep 392. Um uh, which, of course, does have a V8. Well, I'm wondering if the Jeep 392 is meant to compete with this. I feel like Jeep was oh, kind of Jeep Jeep caught off their, off, their, off their game, and they had to, to, to come up with something. So uh, 70 grand starting, but that is before the markups. What are the markups going to be like? You know, I was, I, was racking, Just, I was racking my brain this morning because uh, I read a story that 82% of new car buyers last month paid over sticker. At least three thousand over two percent. Yeah, that means eight out of ten people had to pay at least three thousand over sticker because of dealer markup. So the first problem is, um, I hate the word market adjustment. Why is that? Because that's just whitewashing. It should just be called greed. Something <laughs> right? just call it what it is. Don't call it a market adjustment. Call it just like because look. The reason I call it greed is because is the dealer adding any value at that point to the transit? Are they are they giving you anything more? No, they're not giving you anything more. They're just pocketing between three and thirty thousand dollars more, you know, for the ability to have a, a Bronco to sell. No, you're completely right. Yeah, yeah, I, I completely agree. I hate it, but just just to play devil's advocate for a little bit. Yes. What about this? The 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 concept that, of course, uh, you know, we've had major new car shortages, and the dealer still has to pay their bills. What is your response to that? They're actually making more money than ever because they're only selling the high end stuff because the manufacturers are building only the high-end stuff. So obviously the margin increases as you get more expensive. Uh, and so I think if you were to ask most dealers, they're making more money than ever. And mm -hmm. yet they're still bending you-know-what over and you know giving it to their customers. Not everyone. There's some good ones out there, so I don't mean to you know cast a broad net. But the ones who are doing it are just, you know, maybe you, maybe you call it the bend them over adjustment. Um, I think that... Oh, Tommy doesn't like that. Yeah, I think that... Um, you got the the Ford F one fifty Raptor, yep. right? Is extremely marked up, yep. um, and then the standard Bronco, extremely marked up. So what's going to happen when you when you put the Raptor name on the Bronco? And it's going to be triple extremely marked up. Oh my God! It's gonna anyway, be crazy. look, here's the thing. Like, I mean, the easiest way that, that that as consumers you can fight back is just don't buy it. Yeah, right? but it's, a, it's pretty cool. I mean, at some point, you know, it's a pretty, pretty badass looking rig. At some point, if you don't want to pay, you know, the the uh, the greed adjustment, uh, then just don't don't buy the vehicle. No one's forcing people to buy it, right? I I, I know, I you know. know. Yeah. Um, so it's it's cool. The the other vehicle that Ford rolled out right next to it was the Everglades, Tommy. It was green. Yeah. So this is like if you wanted a Defender, but you also 
didn't want a new defender, <laughs> but you wanted like an old school, I want to go um, trounce through the jungle kind of look. The Everglades is the vehicle for you, so it's got the green paint, so you'll 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 blend in with the ferns. And then it also has a snorkel. Uh, a snorkel. And it, the coolest thing I saw on that one is, this is actually really clever engineering, so kudos, Ford. Uh, you know how some people have this argument that snorkel should face forward or backwards? Oh, yeah. By, by the way, wh- which way should it face? Forward or back? into the air or out of the air? I, I think that your engine's going to figure out a way to suck in the, the air regardless. And it's better than the air coming in next to like the passenger front tire. So it does bring the air intake up higher. But there's a little like cutout tab. It's kind of like a, it doesn't have the little usual, you know, I'm doing the little like elephant tusk with my hand facing forward. It doesn't have that. It's just flat. And then there's a hole, and you can you can open up the hole in the front of the snorkel or in the back of the snorkel. Dude, that's interesting. It's pretty clever, huh? You know, you say it's say better. It's a hole with also like like plastic in it, so it's not just a big hole. It's it's got like uh, a grid in there, a plastic grid. You say it's better than sucking in air from like behind the the, the fender line. Yeah, right? I mean, imagine like how much dust is under there. I'm not sure there's that much, actually. Okay. I almost wonder, and I know it's like the, the hot thing to do, right? And so like Toyota on their, their whatever, their Tacoma, they have got the desert air intake, right? Because right. it's not a snorkel because it doesn't add any additional water for it. I think this is a snorkel. But uh, Everglades is, is a real snorkel. I think you're right on that. But on like the, on the Tacoma, it's not. It's just what they call a desert air intake. Yep. And the idea is that you're going to draw in cleaner air up top than down low. But I was thinking about this, right? Um, so there are like certain storms that, that like they have in Australia where they have like these very low uh, plumes of dust, which are like right at like the tire lever, tire level. Hajib or Habab? No, the, like. the Habub is, is a tsunami of sand. That's not what. No, and that's what you're talking about? No, what no. This, I, don't, I don't know what, what they're What are they called? called in Arizona? The Habub. I, don't, Habib, I think I don't, it's Habub. Anyway, we're, we're certainly massacring that. I feel horrible. <laughs> I think there's people screaming back at their... Oh, hold on. Let me keep going with my little Australian storms. Right. So they have like these special storms where right. like the soot is low right. so that having a high yeah. intake is good. But every time I've ever driven in any kind of dusty conditions, I think the difference between four feet off the ground and three feet off the ground or two feet in terms of clarity of dust really isn't that different. Whereas if you've got an intake like underneath by the the wheel behind the shroud i don't see in my my small brain like are you really getting that much more dust from from well, behind if, 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 a plastic shroud well, if that's your logic why don't you just take the air from inside the cabin well you could <laughs> that would be the cleanest of all probably be uncomfortable for your ears to have twin turbo v6 sucking in air just stick it in the firewall and just you're not going to be able to breathe though because then you're gonna have to get new air into the cabin well it's not going to suck all the air out. it of might it. full <laughs> throttle you're gonna be suffocating it's in not there. hermetically sealed tommy there's air you know have you seen a car that's been crashed and it loses like the back bumper and then you can see these like little almost vents oh sure yeah you that, have to get fresh air in yeah that's where it comes in yeah but it'd be like a, but a vacuum <laughs> i'm just saying just be will, like a windstorm if, if you think that a thunder liner is going to you know, anyway <laughs> i think that i've talked to some engineers about this and one engineer says oh yeah it's much cleaner pie one engineer says actually it's cleaner if you look at the data from drawing it from within the engine bay i, I don't know who to believe all right. Well, anyway, the other the thing they did when they unveiled it, which was really cool, which was smart. So they took a thousand years to pull the tarp yes, off the Everglades. One of the things you I thought it was a joke. I thought you slowed it down. Well, so they had uh, a sheet over it, right? And usually you have like two people who quickly <laughs> pull the sheet, and it's like it looks like you're pulling a tablecloth off the table. But this time, because the Everglades comes with a winch, they winched off the cover that was not clear to me when i saw the reveal i thought it was that was a that was a winch pulling it off some guy or gal like no. shout purposely. out to warren i think it's a warren winch actually shout out to warren no that was not a, that did not work that, well because you couldn't in the video you couldn't there, see there it. were so many people there that you couldn't see the winch but that's what was there it was they winched off the reveal okay I, there were some very funny comments on the um <laughs> on, on, on the, the tiktok, TikTok the, post yeah. i, I want right, to you want to find them i want to find uh the, the top comment i thought it was pretty funny so we got one hundred sixteen thousand people watched it and pulled the tarp off. You're right, you can't see it. There's too many if people. You, if you guys want to uh, 550 join us. people agreed with this guy when he said, hold on, hold on. lost my interest when the cover was taking 75 million years to fall. <laughs> if you guys want to join us on TikTok, it's TFL Studios. That's our TikTok handle. Yeah, they don't want to join us on TikTok. Or if you want to see all of our videos, tfl-studios.com. Why not? You just did it. What did you do today? I, you did a really cool video today, and it was first on TikTok. You did the. I did, but we'll talk about you that. Could as wait well. an hour later, and then it was on YouTube too. Mm-hmm. Well, no, you we uh-huh. went a lot more because we had edited it. So tell, let's talk uh-huh. about that. Uh, that's another cool car that's coming. So you just came back from um, 
doing a video and getting a first-hand look at the Ineos Grenadier. Yeah, this is cool. I really like this. So this was completely unrelated from the Chicago Auto Show. This but it's a cool car that's coming. That's that's the theme of this. The theme of the show is cool cars we're looking forward to driving. Yeah, this is this is going to be top of the list, I think, for most folks. Okay. So there's a guy named uh, Jim Ratcliffe in the UK. Right. And technically, actually, it's Sir Jim Ratcliffe. Oh, he's one of those. Oh, yes. Okay. And and the reason he's Sir Jim Ratcliffe is because he's a pretty big deal in the United Kingdom. Is he wealthy? You could say, you could say okay, that. I take it he's wealthy. So he runs a company called Ineos, okay. which is a multinational chemical company, All right. um, like petrochemical stuff. Uh, and he is worth billions, lots and lots of money. And he was sitting at, a, uh, at his local pub one day, uh, bemoaning, is that a good word? Yeah, it's a great that word. That was a good word. Bemoaning is a good word. Bemoaning yeah. the loss of the old school land over there. Regretting. Defender. Another good word. Yeah, that's yeah, a good word yeah. too. Anyway, he was reminiscing about the old land right. over Defender. And then he said, well, wait, why don't we just build another one? So what he did is he, he built, built a small team, um, and this was like 2016, 2017, and they came up with an idea to replace the bare bones utilitarian four wheel drive with a new model, which would be called the Ineos Grenadier. It's so cool because a couple things, and, and we'll get to more details because I'm really fascinated by this. Uh, I love all off roaders and I love traditional off roaders and I love off roaders that are just basic that don't have a lot of electronic wizardry like screens oh, but yeah. have buttons. And apparently, looking at your videos, this has buttons. So, um, I was talking to, uh, I was out at the ranch today, Tumbleweed Ranch, mm -hmm. and we're going to do a video series called Taming Tumbleweed. Uh, and so I was out there with Sean, and Sean works with Land Rover. Um, and uh, we were talking about building an off-road course where we can actually test stuff on, right? That's oh, yeah. What he, that's what he does for Land Rover. He, one of the things he does, he builds our off-road courses. So hopefully he's going to work with us and help us build ours, or at least help us help us build it. <laughs> So we're going to try to do it yeah. ourselves. What a mess. Yeah, it's going to be fun to watch. Uh, coming soon to TFL channel near you, Taming Tumbleweed. Uh, uh, and we, we had a, actually a guy from Denver uh, who offered to let us use his heavy equipment company, a really nice guy, uh, to actually borrow like things like skid steers uh, and all the things we need to actually do this. So thank you. Uh, we're working with him, and he'll be part of that series as well. Oh, cool. Is that cool? Like just people watching our videos and they say, hey, you need some heavy equipment? You, I'm need, a, you need an excavator? You got it. We got it's it. very, very cool. I'm anyway, very so let, let me, What does this have to do with the right, video? So, 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 <laughs> so he has two defenders. Okay. And I was bemoaning the fact, okay. Well, he's got the hold up. He's got the old defenders. Right, the old ones. I saw one parked up front the office. I rolled up. I'm uh, like, whoa, that was who, 80, who drove a Camel Trophy Defender? That was an 82. The, yeah, that thing was rad. Yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, we'll do a dude. I love my ride on it. Okay. He said he'd let us do that. So that's coming. But uh, what happened was nature abhors a vacuum, right? And so uh, basically... What in the heck does that mean? Because <laughs> what does people that mean? out there know what that means. <laughs> you, I'm not smart nature enough. Nature abhors a vacuum means that if you leave a space open, something will fill it in nature. Right. If you if you if you don't plant a garden, let's say you have a lot plot and you don't plant it with tomatoes, something will grow in there. Okay. Right. Nature pours a vacuum. It won't leave it empty. Something is going to use use that space to come alive in. And, and the same is true with the auto industry. So basically, let's 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 get real. Right. Uh, Land Rover when they built the Defender, uh, in in essence built a discovery competitor. The new Defender. Yeah, the new yeah. Defender. Mm -hmm. Right, the old Defender was square-jawed. It was like a Wrangler. It was not comfortable. It was not quick, but it was very good off-road. So solid axles, right, everything you'd want out of a true, like, old-school Defender. The new Defender, of course, is uh, we, I, I use the term urban chic. It's much more, like, like the person who's going to use it is more likely to drive to Whole Foods uh, than to... Tasmania. Yeah, Baja, from the Baja <laughs> Peninsula, right? right. Yeah, Which yeah. makes sense. I mean, that's what most people use sure. them for. Yeah, yeah, it makes But all of a sudden sense. now, you've got this vacuum where somebody was going to want a square-jawed, old-school Defender because Land Rover's not building it. Along comes Mr. Ineos. Is that his name? Uh, Radcliffe. Oh, Radcliffe. Along comes Mr. Ineos' is a company. Along comes Mr. Radcliffe and says, you know what? So sorry, Sir Radcliffe. Along comes Sir Radcliffe. Sorry. <laughs> yep, got to get that right. Sorry, Sir Radcliffe. It's a big deal, apparently. I, I agree. Okay. It's, a, uh, it's yeah. your title. I'll use it. Along comes Sir Radcliffe and says, you know what? We've got this whole 
nature abhors a vacuum. We've got this vacuum. I'm going to fill it with my version of the Defender. And that's what he's doing. And actually, Bollinger did the same thing, except, of course, they pulled out. They didn't do it. They didn't do it. The issue is that um, your, your vacuum has a few a few clogs in it, okay, right? Okay, what, what are my clogs? Well, what, are, what, are my, what are my, what's, what's the problem? Well, I mean, it'd be great to, to be like, oh, let's just redo a 1973 Series 3 Defender. Like, that's a great idea, right? Right. But nowadays, you have to meet crash protection requirements, you have to meet By EPA emissions, carb emissions, and it's very difficult to build a basic utilitarian off-roader. So uh, a Series 3 would not have been a Defender, it would have been just a Series That's 3. That's right. That's why I said Series. You said Series 3 Defender. Oh, did I? Yeah, oh, I, I just, messed I just, up. I'm just, I hear all the Defender people like, oh, it's not a Defender. Well, um, so anyways, what Mr. Ratcliffe did yeah. um, is he, and they're actually surprisingly open about it, yeah. uh, very open about it, and actually in the London Concour, they parked this new Ineos next to a collection of their own vehicles, which included a Willys Jeep, a G-Wagon, um, and of course... So tell me about a it. ...a Series Defender. Yeah. Well, it's a... Def- have you seen like a 20... 20- I, 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 have you seen a 20... 20- like in Europe, they sold a Defender up until the late 2010s. Uh-huh. Have you seen like a 2015 Defender? Uh-huh. Well, then you've seen an Ineos from a design standpoint. All right, so I, 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 the, the problem I have with it is you've got two words that are hard to pronounce and sound French. Yeah. Ineos and Grenadier. Not a great name. I agree. Why wouldn't you call it, like, you know, the Churchill? Well, because that was a tank. Exactly. I'm, that, <laughs> that's what I would have called it, the Churchill. Yeah, the name is, is, is questionable, but the vehicle is very rad. So it does, I mean, there's, there's just no way around it. It looks so much like an old Defender. I wonder if, I wonder if Land Rover is like going to go and say no, no, no. Uh, I think that... Are they going to... Uh, I don't want to speak out of turn, but I'm, I'm quite sure that's happened. Is there legal, is there legal issues that are going to come um, forth Let me, let me, let me do a, a brief Google here. All right, is it gonna, Ineos uh, wins challenge over SUV similarity to Land Rover Defender. Because, that was because an, Jeep did the same thing, of course, you know. Yeah, that was an August 2020 car and driver uh, headline. So I, I think there was, oh, another one. Land Rover loses Defender-related trademark lawsuit. Well, so it looks like there was already one. Jeep won theirs, right? You know Jeep that. won theirs against Mahindra. Yeah, yeah. They, had, they had a seven-slotted... Uh, uh, side-by-side side right. that looked too much like a Wrangler. Anyway, so well, first of all, what powers it? Why do I, I want to I talk about the design? I'm not about done des- about the design. Well, now you told me it looks like an old Defender. But there's some, there's some differences. So, so it's, it's square. It's, it's very got like square. Big, big round lights. It's got probably, I'm just guessing. It's got flat fenders in the front. It's got a clamshell hood. Probably it's got those like little nipple uh, turn signals, right, that point out. Uh, no. No, it doesn't. No, have so the, the front end design's different, the grill's different, okay. uh, the rear taillights are different, and there's a bunch of major differences. So imagine like the back, mostly Defender, yeah. with door handles off of a G-Wagon. Remember like the little yeah. old button style door handles? Um, and beautiful steel wheels, so it's very old school. You know guys, if you're listening to this as a podcast, I will have the editors actually use Tommy's video that you shot and wow. roll it over this so you can look at it. So Unbelievable. For, all, for all you podcasters, you're going to have to trust Tommy's description or you can go over to TFL Talk or TFL Dash Studios and you can actually see the thing. Yeah, and it, it's got like, okay, it's got some like things. So Defenders had these things called Alpine windows. Yeah, I know, the little, little skylights. In the roof, they had these little square skylights. Yeah. And when you look at the Ineos, you're like, oh, it's got Alpine windows. And then you look closer, and you're like, oh, those Alpine windows are actually grab handles so you can get up to the roof. Oh, okay. So the design, it's a big box with four doors and a trunk. I thought they maybe renamed them like Safari windows. No, they didn't rename them. (laughs) Although what they did do, which I thought was very clever, um, it has two sunroofs, but not like you've ever seen before. Like not like one in the front that covers the... Driver and passenger, and one that covers the two rear or three rear passengers. No, so they're they're probably. Well, how can you change it? Def- they changed it. Have you ever seen a school bus? Sure. You know how they have those porthole hatches out the roof that like pop open. Yeah. They're like that, but made out of glass. And there's a square rectangle. Really? Yeah. There's a little rectangle above the driver yeah. in the front, a little rectangle above the passenger in the front, and then an old school manual latch, and you go thunk. And you can push out the glass panel. Remember, above. we had that uh, pop-up camper that had those. Yeah, it's kind of like you know, it's it had like a little fan in them. This is this is a. <laughs> this bring. is better than that. <laughs> this is a this is a comparison to your generation. A solar power fan. Do you, oh, remember, thanks. do you remember the T top? Yes, I remember the T tops. In in yes, it's I remember. Not, that was a nice thing I said. I could have been like, this is a generation from covered wagons. <laughs> I thought it was nice to you there. T tops aren't that old, uh, but yeah, they're like T tops. But uh, the roof doesn't come off. It's a fixed steel roof, except for these portholes that pop up. 
Uh, so that's a cool design thing. Now the engine. So let me do a let me do a, a favor for you. Okay. All right. Let's do a SpongeBob reference. Okay. Okay. Yep. <laughs> oh yeah. Actually, SpongeBob never drove a car, or if he did, no, he drove boats. Remember? He drove those little boats. Yeah, yeah he that's could right. never pass his driver's license. Yeah, yeah. His boating license. Yeah. yeah. It's scary. I know that. Anyways, can we keep going, or do you want to make fun no, of my my no no youth? no no keep going? Let's, but let's get to the powertrain. Let's okay, so the powertrain is a it's a BMW engine. Okay. In Europe, they're getting a six-cylinder BMW gas and a six-cylinder BMW diesel. Mm-hmm. Here in the states, we're only getting the six-cylinder BMW gas engine. Straight six. Straight six. Oh, it's cool. the same engine in my mom's BMW X5, actually. It's called the B58 3-liter turbocharged. Um, kind of an interesting thing, right? So, like, I was expecting it to be, because the whole thing is so utilitarian. So, like, 300 and plus horsepower. Well, it's, I was expecting, like, a little carbureted four-cylinder, right? yeah. like the old ones. Um, that would be real. Like, it's like a basketball. That, that would be right <laughs> out with the Defender. Yeah, but, the, I mean, the, they went with BMW for a few reasons. Uh, BMW um, actually partners with them. They don't just buy the engine. So BMW okay. retunes the engine. They don't have horsepower torque numbers. Okay. But it's going to be lower, they said, than like an X5 because it's tuned for off-road so, torque. So is this company real? Do they have a factory? Yeah, they do have a factory. Okay, that's good. Um, anyways, they, they really wanted to make a big deal that, that, that they thought that was a great engine. The, uh, the factory is on the French-German border. Okay. It's a ex-Mercedes factory. Where they built smart cars and then like the EQB or EQC. Oh, that's good. And it's interesting, actually. It's good to have a factory. They're they're still contracting with Mercedes to build them some vehicles. So so now they have the factory, but Mercedes is like, that's great, but can we still have a few cars from there? So Mercedes is going. Oh, so I they're still building some cars, and then alongside, they're also developing it for the Ineos. So, so kind of like the G wagon in a way, which is built in Austria. Yeah, and so right. that so G wagon, right? We're talking about G wagons, this is a great transition. The uh, the the kind of the brain trust behind G wagons, a company called Magna. Yeah. Same company behind the um, Ineos. So oh. Magna did a lot of the underbody engineering. Okay. So they did a lot of the engineering bits. Um, axles got solid axles are engineered by a company called uh, Dana. Car- no Carrero. <laughs> it's like the Portuguese Dana. Uh, okay. Yeah, right. exactly. It's like the, they do tractor axles, uh-huh. Uh-huh. and then it's got locking diffs. It's got a ladder frame. It's got about they said over ten inches of ground clearance. Did they tell you how much it weighs? They did not, and I should have asked, but I think they're still working some of that out. Um, it's got a locking center diff. Uh, really cool stuff, though. And the reason I was skeptical going in is because we get so many emails about, like, new products. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but it sounds like this company is going to happen. So they're actually – they just rolled the first vehicles off of the assembly line. Ooh. And they're going to hit uh, customer hands in August or September of this year. In, yeah. It's been a rough time. In Europe. Uh, like there's a lot of companies where you don't know how real they are, right? Cause, yeah. Because unfortunately, there's it's a great time to start a car or a truck company, but it's also a great time to start a car or a truck company with no intention to actually build a car or a truck, <laughs> yeah. but do a SPAC uh, and cash out. You know, I, I, I'm thinking Nikola. I'm thinking. Well, I, I, I don't know. I don't want to like besmirch other companies, but Nikola might come screaming out of the gates. Who knows? Yeah. Well, this founder is under it. Under SCC. No, that's invest. not typically a great, great start. Yeah, yeah it's not a great start. But you, this you, is such you a the company. this is such a crazy time. I mean, apart from like DeLorean, right, and then a bunch of companies in 1903. When was the last time that we saw such an introduction of brand new car companies? You, you got Fisker back. You got Fisker. You got Rivian. Canoe, you got Rivian. You got Canoe. Well, let's not jump our gun on Canoe. You got yet. Atlas. Let's, you got well, Bollinger. It's not, okay, you let got, me rephrase this. There's a few companies that are actually hitting production. You got Rivian, you got Tesla, right? And these are brand new companies uh-huh. um, that are actually making it work. Uh, there's a lot of companies that Lucid. I'm Lucid is another great one, right? They're, they're actually, actually they're, making they're, they're it work. They have a factory in, in Arizona. Um, and now, uh, but it's it's bad for the real companies because they get slated in with the ones who aren't making it work. You know? Yeah. Well, you just slated them in together. That's the problem. That's you, the problem. You, so it, it creates a lot of uh, questions about. So it, it creates a lot of opportunities and a lot of questions. So it depends, like, are you a half empty or half full glass kind of person? I'm always half empty. Okay. I, I just, it's so and hard. as journalists, we have to be half empty. We can't be family. It's so hard to make a car, and there's so much that goes into it, and so many. Uh, are, all right, so when is this thing, is it going to be sold in America? Yeah, it's coming to the States. Obviously, it's here. Obviously, it wouldn't be here. Okay. Well. I interviewed their executive vice president for the States. Yeah. They're building headquarters in Raleigh, North Carolina. Okay. Um, and it's going to – so they're currently under the um, scrutiny of, like, the EPA. They're under the scrutiny of um, 
uh, scrutiny is the wrong word. They're, they're ongoing testing, I should say, with the government agency so they can sell it here. Okay. So that's happening so they're, right they're now. they're going through regula regulatory. Yeah, so EPA, CAR, right. uh, NHTSA, yeah. all yeah. that testing okay. that needs to be done. So they're doing that right now. And they said they're going to be um, available in the States late summer of 2023. And the final question before we move on for pricing. I don't, they don't have it. How much do you think? Uh, 55. Fifty. I'm, no I'm going fifty-five. I'm, I'm, go I'm going fifty-five. Oh, dude, no way. Oh yeah. We just paid seventy k for basically a heavy-duty truck with. It's got manual sunroof. So I'm going with fifty-five. I'm going grand. with at least hundred. At uh, least hundred in today's world. It's got it's got the most bizarre interior I think I've ever seen. It's like um, something straight out of like a 1970s aircraft liner. Uh, it's all very industrial, very purposeful with big square buttons. They kind of look like Legos. And very easy to to read. Yeah, tell a little about that. Yeah, but I like too that like. Um, the reason I think they're going to make it is a lot of the companies try to do everything by themselves, right? And they claim to do everything by themselves, and we're building the chassis, we're building the axles, we're building the engine. And these guys are smart enough to be like, all right, let's we'll get people to know how to let's do get so. people that know how to right. do this to do this. All right, well, let's uh, keep going. Uh, so one of the vehicles that this week that you've driven and uh, taken off road, and that video is of course at tfl-studios.com, is the new uh, Tahoe Z71. What do you think of it? It's good. Yeah, you like the towel? Yeah. A big boy, big pan kind of truck? Um, they did a good job. So they sent us a one. We had it. Remember, we, we took it off-road. I remember we took it off-road when it first came out. But this one had the the, the big, big engine, right? So The, the one, 6'2". Yeah, this was this was the, the yeah. monster. Yeah. It's 400 and... Ooh, what is it? 20. 20, 460. 420, 460. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. Like I... I really liked it. I, I didn't love it as much the first time, but I kind of spent some more seat time behind the wheel of it, and I, I really came out pretty impressed. I like the look of it. It looks really it good. It looks really cool, yeah. yeah. It's got height adjustable air suspension. I don't think GM really has the air suspension quite dialed okay. in. Yeah, they have done no, for a long they time. Good, it's, it's still a GM's little... GM's done a lot of good stuff, but air suspension. Yeah, it's got, like, I had a couple weird anomalies go on during our testing. Okay. Um, but it does have a low range. It's got a limited slip diff, which I, I ran through some testing and grips pretty well. It does a good job of sending wheel speed to the other wheel. Like, it's good. Uh, interior's nice. How much? 72 grand. It's a lot of money. You think this Grenadier is going to be 50? 55, baby. <laughs> That's what I'm going with. 55. The Grenadier, by the way, has a, a split rear gate like an Isuzu Trooper. It's got a little baby door. Like a barn gate? And a giant door. Like a barn gate. Yeah. yeah. But right. it's it's not equal. It's like a tiny door and a big door. So you like the Tahoe? I like the Tahoe. I you did. You know what I about the Tahoe? I love the Tahoe because it's just, it's just, it is what it is, right? It doesn't put on airs. It's just a big family hauling, relatively comfortable Relatively thirsty, good old American truck. Uh, they, they, yeah, they could have. Um, it doesn't sound very good. I'm, I'm, I, I, yeah, I mean, that, it's that, better yeah, than six, I thought. That six two, you got to uncork it. GM yeah. put so much work into yeah. making it absolutely silent. I'm and, like, make the five three quiet, make the six two burly. And, and here's the crazy part. Uh, and I could be chip shortage issues because I thought by now you could do it. But if you want the Z seventy one, the off road package. You can't get it with the uh, new straight six three liter diesel. I thought they were changing that, or, no, or was that no, the, no. the Trail Boss? No. I thought one of them, the eighty four. No, can't get it. Oh, okay. Which is a shame because that's a gem of an engine. Yeah, that is a good engine. Um, uh, all right, but they did a good job with it. I liked the Tahoe a lot. All right, so, so what else did you do, see? Uh, can I do my rant now? That'll lead into our next car. Okay, yeah. I'll do my rant. Okay. Um, you know, everybody out there is super hot for electric vehicles because of their efficiency. Yep. And yet. Did you know that there's a vehicle you could buy out there that costs about $30,000, right? That gets almost 40 miles to the gallon, that has every safety feature you could ever want, mm -hmm. that has heated seats and steering wheel, uh -huh. that can be had in not just front wheel drive, but four wheel drive, uh -huh. that has tons of space, uh -huh. comfortable seating, a really interesting layout of controls that's easy to read and tells you everything that's going on in the vehicle. Mm -hmm. uh, and that uh, is one of, I think, the most undervalued vehicles in the marketplace. And you know, I'm talking about the vehicle whose name cannot be spoken. Yeah, the Pontiac Aztec. <laughs> Highly underrated vehicle. I've been saying it for years since we owned one. Loved it. You got the P right. Um, okay. Oh, you're going that direction. Yes. Oh. So, uh, no, everyone's going to click out now. They're and not click out. Please yes, don't they click are. Out. No. They're going to go to the other podcast. Look, or... so my rant is this, okay? W before you talk about the Toyota 
Prius, Prius that we were, we were testing, right? Mm -hmm. You actually made a really good point. We were driving yesterday to get have a little bit of Red Robin. Yep. Right? And you were like, you know, for $31,000... This is an amazing car. Uh -huh. Everybody's like, oh, especially Tesla has got to have the EV, got to have the EV. But yet this vehicle has batteries, has batteries and a powertrain we know will last to at least, what, 300,000 miles? I have to correct you on one thing you said. What? Um, I, I love you, but you messed up the biggest issue. What's that? You said almost 40 MPG. I said almost 60. You said 40. Oh, I meant 60. So yeah. if I said 40, <laughs> I meant 60. It's like 58. It, it's crazy. Yeah, that's just what insane about the Prius. I drove, so I, we had the Prius uh, this week. Yeah. And it's a vehicle that all the car enthusiasts like to hate on. That's everybody, why Everybody loves to hate yeah, on. Yeah, that's why we were, we were joking about it earlier. But it's a phenomenal car. Everybody needs a Prius. I mean, I drove it up to the mountains and back. Um, you know, 150 miles through the Rocky Mountains, back down. 52 MPG, I calculated and at you the pump. And you compared it to our little tiny Mini SE, which is electric Mini. Uh -huh. And how much how much fuel, this is on TFL EV now, the, the, the comparison. How much money did you spend for the Prius versus the Mini EV in terms of, like, how much did it cost you to go? How, how many miles did you go? I was, like, 176. Okay, so you went 176 miles. How much did it cost to do that in the Mini SE? It was like eight bucks and change. Okay, and how much did it cost in the Prius? It was 10 bucks and change, but we had to stop and charge up the Mini halfway through, which took 20 minutes. The Prius has a range of over 300, I'm, I'm willing to say. The thing is awesome. I freaking love the Prius. It, it has, what kind of batteries does this one have? It's, I think they're the nickel metal hydrate, so which, they're they're like the, the dirt simple bat. <laughs> they're like not fancy and they're heavy compared to like a Tesla battery of, of similar size. But uh, I mean, like, it's ridiculously which we, good. Which we've talked to Uber drivers and taxi drivers, and we know that vehicle will go 250 miles without any issues. Maybe even um, 250,000 miles. That's what I'm saying, 250,000 miles. Oh, you said 250. I meant 250,000. <laughs> Sorry, I told me to correct you. I, I keep messing up, so... Uh, <coughs> 250,000 miles without yeah people love them and like like you were saying so we had the it was an XLE and it was like a nightshade 31 grand did you really not know I was talking about the Prius when I did that whole Roman yeah, I knew what you were talking about the okay, Prius right, I just right. I, I love to give the Aztec a, a, a name drop okay, because right, I love the right, Aztec right. but the uh, Prius like you said 31 grand it's got all the safety gear adaptive cruise control lane keep assist lane centering it's got well, a, basically it's got autopilot yeah it's got basically Tesla's autopilot yeah. it's the same thing on the highway exactly the same thing it's got and that's my rant, dude. People are like all you know, crazy about like if you're an electric car, I gotta have an electric car. Yet there's this car that does everything that an electric car does, right? Yet it does more for half the price. I mean, or less than half the price. Okay, so the downfalls of it, it looks like an Apple computer mouse, and it's not fast. I don't think it's that much worse looking than a Model Y. Yeah, Model Y looks like a doorstop, um, but it's it's not fast or quick. You know, like that is. But you can get an all-wheel drive. You can get an all-wheel drive. drive is really cool because it's powered by the battery. So yep. it's, it's it's a separate. It's a, basically an electric rear-wheel drive system. Yeah, but I mean, like the back seat is huge. The trunk is enormous. The value is good. The fit and finish is excellent. It's a little bit noisy on the highway. I thought it was quite a bit louder on the highway than some of the EVs I've driven, uh, just from like a road noise standpoint. I, I, but it's I, lovely. I've made the I've made the statement that the Prius is like this generation's or our generation's VW Beetle, and I stand by that. They just, I think, they I think need people, to, people need to buy more of them. I think people will, you know, 30 years from now, look back upon the Prius and say that. And you said you were when you were in Japan, people actually customize them. They like yeah. stamp some. They, they there's like, like a big community around tuning them, the Prius. They, like here, there's like a stigma around driving it. Right. In Japan, it's like a cool thing to drive a Prius. You, you can put big wheels on them and get body kits and flares and all sorts of cool stuff for your Prius. I love it. I think it's a great car. It's comfortable, easy to drive. It's some of the best value out there. Um, but nobody wants to drive a Prius. I mean, everyone will drive a Corolla hybrid or a Camry hybrid, but the Prius is the black sheep. So for all of you EV aficionados, I get it. You want to do something else. But if you're looking at, like, the practical side of your brain, go get yourself a Prius. It's going to cost less. It's gettable. Uh, and it's going to be, in the long term, almost as fuel efficient. Uh, and it's going to give you a lot more creature comforts for a lot less money than most electric cars will. I would say a Prius, even if you compare it to, like... Um, like a, a Ionic 5, which is a great car, by the way, uh, or, or a 3, is going to be half the price. You're going to spend half the money, and you're going to be almost as efficient. And you're not going to have to worry about, like, running out of electricity in the middle of the road. It's great. I really love it. I think it's a...
fantastic little car that's in its fourth generation. Fourth gen. Fourth, I think. It's a little long in the tooth, design-wise. It's time for them to update it. But, uh, yeah, if you can find one, I mean... And, and, okay, okay, it's driving lovely. dynamically. An electric car will blow its doors off. It's not, it's not the most fun vehicle to drive. No. But then again, electric cars are also about um, economy, and it is as oh, almost as fuel-efficient. Well, I'm sure if you compare kilowatt hours to miles per gallon, it's still pretty far down there. But what, whatever, like 52 mpg. Dude, you, you, you can take that thing and road trip it right now without worrying about like where to recharge. Oh yeah, great, great little car. Um, and you're not dumping a lot if you're into like you know being green because it's so fuel efficient. You're not actually dumping a lot of carbon into well, the. Well, the other thing too is if you ha if you're one of these people that's concerned about you know like the entire life cycle of the car, right from production to death of the vehicle. I mean, there's a huge amount of environmental costs with digging up lithium for these enormous batteries. I mean, a Tesla Model 3 has a 75 kilowatt hour battery or something, right? The Prius has a one and a half kilowatt hour battery and it's 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 tiny. Like it doesn't take up that many resources. Uh, the gasoline engine is efficient and it will go and go and go and go. It's like reduce, reuse, recycle. And if you really want to be green about it, you can buy a used Prius and then it's just, you know, Emitting, emitting roses and, and truffles out the pipe. All right, well, can we talk about some more uh, cool vehicles I, I got up close and personal with in Chicago? Yeah, what'd you see? Well, before we get back to cars, there were uh, actually two trucks that were pretty interesting. And I'm sorry, I know this is usually on our truck podcast, but I'm not, I think Andrew's not talking about the auto show, so I have to talk about them. Okay. So I think, I think potentially the star of the show may have been the Silverado EV. Yeah, that's a pretty cool thing. So it's the fully electric Chevy. What did you think of it in person? Well, it's funny because, like, first you, you were walking down, and I look, and I'm like, holy cow, that's a Z06. So it was my first time seeing the Z06. Okay, yeah, the Corvette. And then I looked at the Silverado EV, and I'm like, oh, wow. It, it was like, I was like, you know, like, like uh, um, rabbit. Right? What's, it, what's that? Is it rabbit? Squirrel. Oh, squirrel. Sorry. Squirrel. Squirrel. Right? Uh, and it was in this beautiful ocean blue, um, and uh, it just looks stunning, Tommy. The interior looks stunning. Uh, it has the avalanche pass-through, which I think is brilliant. So you can kind of fold the seats back, and you've got that firewall that you can fold down, uh, and then you can actually extend the bed so you can put, you know, much longer bits of lumber or plywood or whatever you want to put back there. Uh, it has this uh, really interesting, uh, it was like white and blue design on the interior, which I'm just a sucker for. It's got a massive frunk. Uh, and I think it looks much better. Like the Ford... Lightning, which is also there, looks a lot like an F-150, right? This is its own design language, uh, and I think they did a really good job with it. Uh, the problem with it is they're really behind in, in getting them out the door. You know, well, they're, they're saying, what, 24, 2024? 2023, maybe. Yeah, I mean, they've done such a, I think they've really made an error in the marketing and the rollout of this vehicle because what Ford did, which was really smart with the Lightning, is they came out of the gate saying it's going to be 39 and change, $1,000, right? Um, and that was the number they focused on. But with GM, they wanted to do the the, uh, the the launch edition first, right, with all the goodies. And even though the base model might start at 40, the one that are coming up first is over $100,000. And I think that's blowing people's minds. And that's really sucking a lot of the attention away from the more affordable mainstream ones is this price tag of a hundred grand for the launch edition. Yeah, um, but it's beautiful, you know, so I, I could see why you know, GM is not stating how many are in the first edition, which this was. This was the first edition, which is weird. They should just state the number because basically what that tells people is that they'll build as many as they can sell. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Right. But that's just, you know, just you're going to make a, at least number it, right? At least say we're going to build 7,500, 72. I think that's what Ford did with the Bronco uh, first edition. But at least, you know, give it a number. Uh, GM, you'll do better. D I think you can do better. Is it is it good looking person? It looks it's a very good looking person. All right, it's I'm very not convinced. Looks you know a little roly poly in the pictures. You know what isn't as good looking in person? It's over almost overwrought Z06. So the Z06, oh. you know, the, the the new Stingray is already a really kind of like um, highly styled vehicle. So there's a lot going on in the Stingray, right? You've got you've got a lot of intersecting lines. The back end is supposed to resemble a jet fighter, which I get. Uh, but then when you take it to the next level, right, it almost looks like it's, it almost starts to look like, you know, like a uh, high school racer wannabe. Okay. And I know it is. Right, yeah. But, but it, it, you know, I want to say those rear tires are 335s. Is that right? On a Z06? Yeah, that, that could yeah. be right. Yeah. yeah. I want to say, that I, I was looking at them and I was like, I haven't seen a tire this wide since a Countach. I mean, they're like, you know, like, like that wide. It's incredible. Uh, 2.6 GM is saying 0 to 60. 
That's yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. yeah. 640 horsepower, if I believe, and like a 10 second quarter mile, if I recall from the video I did. Uh, obviously, once again, unobtainium in today's market. So I'm sure dealers are going to pop those babies over 50,000 over sticker. Uh, it was in this beautiful orange color. Uh, so part of me was like, I love this car. And that part of me was like, this screams, you know, give me a ticket. Did you see, I'm just looking it up here on the computer. Did you see the new Sierra Denali Ultimate? Yes, we did. That was a surprise hit of the show. It was kind of off in the corner. Uh, and then Andre's like, we got to do the Ultimate. And I'm like, I didn't, know, I didn't even know what the Ultimate was, right? So... Uh, First of all, where do you go beyond ultimate? So I thought Denali was ultimate and GMC speak, right? I thought that was the highest trim. Actually, it doesn't even say Denali anywhere on it. It's got, like, ultimate everywhere. Oh, really? Yeah. So, yeah. so once, at some point, the appetite for expensive trucks seems to be so great that you can't, like, stop at Denali. you got to go into ultimate. And then what do you do beyond ultimate? Extreme. Well, ultimate. <laughs> ultimate extreme. This, this is, like, the most luxurious Sierra 1500 you could ever see. It's got... Two kinds of stitching in the interior. It's got French and then like special stitching. It's got uh, the Denali uh, topographical map that's actually etched into both the leather uh, and into the plastic, which is really cool. Uh, it had this really beautiful paint that was like this metal, dark, like gray metal fleck paint that looked crazy expensive. Uh, you know, chrome everywhere. Uh, of course, it had the carbon pro bed it had the uh you know the funky tailgate and and, and i was betting with andrea i was like i wonder if it's going to have the speakers in the uh you know in the tailgate yeah when you open it up mm -hmm. and it did of course yeah, it had, it had sure. the speakers so yeah, yeah I think it's it like looks... it's, it's like gm threw everything and the kitchen sink at this thing it looks good though they did a good job styling especially the um the interior i think is better than than what they've done in the past they've, they've definitely stepped up their interior game so i'm, I'm excited about it i think it's, it's pretty cool yeah then, then there are some honorable mentions that we can talk about from the show um, so, uh, you know, I, I love Jeeps, right? So I had a long uh, interview with Jim Morrison of Jeep, uh, and they said, stay tuned. Uh, what, what I think he's hinting at is uh, Jeep has a, a, a straight six that is supposedly coming, a turbo, twin turbo straight six. And I think, and he didn't say this, so I'm not going to uh, attribute this to him, but I think it's going to be unveiled at the New York Auto Show. And I think what, that's going to be their new power plant. I'm excited for that. I think that's going to be pretty cool. And, yeah, he was very cool. He, he gave you a nice tour of the, the Jeep walk around yeah, thank the you, booth. Jim. Yeah. If you want to see that, it's over at Tiffle Now, so be sure to check that out. But a couple other vehicles that I saw come out of the show. We saw the um, uh, Kia Sportage plug-in hybrid. Yeah, 2023 model. It's basically a Sportage uh, that now is a plug-in hybrid. So it's got, on, one, on the passenger side, I think it's got the uh, uh, electric power charging um, and on the right side, it's got the gas. It's You know, we've been talking about the Prius I think that uh, there's a lot to be said for uh, plug-in hybrids. Now, they can be the worst of both worlds, right? Let's say Jeep also had the uh, new Grand Cherokee 4xE uh, Trailhawk, which Jim said gets 27 miles of pure electric range. So if you don't plug them in, they're just horrible because you're carrying around basically a battery and a motor, right? For, for a little reason. Right. And, and the difference between a motor and an engine is a motor is electric and an engine is gas for no reason. And, and that's stupid. So basically you're getting horrible fuel economy and you're still using, you know, tons well, of... Well, not, not horrible, but... Well... It, I mean, it'll operate as a hybrid, but rather than using all 18 kilowatt hours or whatever it is, you're only going to be using the bottom 1.5 that it keeps in reserve. Yeah, but Jim made the point that he was driving one and he never... Uh, actually runs the engine. If you plug it in, it's great. Yeah, so yeah. He, he plugs in at night at home, drives it to work, plugs in at work, drives it home. And in that case, it's basically you've got all the benefits of an electric car with a range extender. So if you do want to go and, you know, not, you know, you forgot to plug the dang thing in or you need to go pick up the kids and take them to soccer uh, and you don't have enough electricity in the vehicle, you can just use the gas. I engine. think plug-in hybrids are too confusing. I think you're right. I, think a lot I don't of, think that I consumers think understand point, them. Yeah. I mean, Toyota runs these surveys every year about like the knowledge that people have around electric cars and plug-in hybrids. And it was like, I don't want to misstate the numbers, but it was ridiculous. It was like they ran it a few years ago, and something like 50% of people thought that you needed to uh, – 50% uh, of people thought that a Prius didn't need gasoline. It was a huge number, uh, which is astonishing because a Prius has been around since 2000, 2000 in the States, right, or 2001. And then they ran it a few years later to see if the education had improved, and it was like 
50% of people think that the Prius doesn't need gasoline. <laughs> it was like the same number. I was I was listening to one of the most popular and oldest podcasts in the business. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna, I don't want to like take out, you know, I don't want to call people out, but uh, even they were confused with the difference between electric uh, and plug-in hybrid. Well, it's also confusing when the manufacturers state the words electrified, right? Like that that just adds a whole nother dimension. I mean, what is electrified? Like is a mild hybrid electrified? Is a full hybrid electrified? Is a plug-in hybrid electrified? Um, is a full hybrid electric? Is a plug-in hybrid electric? It just, we need to get our terms, we need to get our ducks in a row, people. Yeah, and that's why I like, I mean, electric cars are simple because they don't have an engine. Uh, and so, but even people are confused by that. Toyota did that that survey too, and then people were like, "Oh, I thought it had a gasoline engine." It's like it's an electric car. <laughs> it's <was> ridiculous. <laughs> so anyway, let, let's get off the semantics of what is an electric car and what isn't. Let's get back to cars. Uh, also, at the Chicago Auto Show, we've done so much with this. Was the new uh, Sequoia? Yep, yeah, the new Toyota, the full size SUV. Yeah, yeah, we've done a lot with that. Basically, a Tundra with. Um, um, and then, uh, then there was a brand whose name we cannot speak because they don't work with us. Mm-hmm. Uh, they had the new three letter starting with a W, uh, with an R in the middle and an X at the end. So I got to see that up close and personal. Uh, um, uh, let us say it, it doesn't look as you know. We, pe- people gave that vehicle a lot of uh, a guff because of. the plastic cladding. In person, it doesn't look as bad. I, I thought it was actually pretty good. Toyota also had their new electric car there, full electric car. Actually, actually let me, let me, let me, um, if Subaru, you are listening. Okay, this is to you, Subaru. They aren't. If you are listening. They're not. <laughs> let's, let's, let's bury the hatchet. Wow. Let's, let's, let, let us have a fresh start. Let us reset the relationship. We live in a state that loves Subarus. Yeah. We have the largest Subaru audience potentially for you mm-hmm. in our off-road channel. Uh, we do. We own a ranch now, so we're going to be doing some really great off-road testing. You guys are out there trying to build some really interesting overlanding rigs. I'm not going to call them off-roaders because they're, they're probably better suited for overlanding. So let's bury the hatchet. But we've owned Subarus, I, and they're I, all great, actually. All Subarus. the Subarus we've had We, we, we would love really to work with you guys uh, and, you know, have some wilderness trims here that we could actually review and you know get a lot of our viewers listeners tiktokers i think we've got now you know one of the largest uh off-road channels as well um to 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 check out your cars so let's let's restart super this is an invitation for me saying you know put the past behind us what has what has been in the past we will we shall not talk about and let's start afresh and let's Start in 2022, uh, and let's 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 work together again. What a nice olive branch that's going out to nobody listening. What a shame. <laughs> they all left when we started talking about the Prius. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there's like four people left. That yeah, exactly. Right it's like three stragglers <laughs> barely holding any, on. Any, anyway, I thought that the WRX looked better. Uh, I like it. I think it's cool. Yeah, they did a good job. They also um, talk about electric cars, right? The the uh, the Toyota BZ4X. Mm. And the Subaru Solterra, the full oh. electric cars. Uh, do, you I want, know, do you want to go there? The BZ4X was at Chicago. Did you uh, see it? It, yes, was in a, it. it was in a little I, pen. I, I saw the Solterra too. Yeah, it's in a you little pen. To, I don't. I just. I just extended an olive branch. You really want me to go into um, potential problems with it's both fine. those vehicles? I think it'll be fine. You it's, think so? Yeah, people that want a Toyota or a Subaru and the also thinking about electric car, it'll appeal to them. Okay. I agree. I'm not, I'm not going to talk about like you it's know. It's got its flaws. I agree. It's not that impressive. Rates, yeah, yeah. I know. Range. I know. But I think that it, it will have its demographics and its audience for sure. Okay. Um. So I'm trying to think what else. What other kind of videos do we put out? We saw the electric transit. The yes. van. That's that was cool. cool. Yeah, yeah. That's actually co- going out now. Uh, what a great use case for electrification, right? If you're going to be driving around less than 100 miles and doing a lot of stop starts, I couldn't think of anything better. It was cool, dude. It was really cool. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm. I, I think that that's. Uh, I worry that that's going to be like a Chevy Volt situation. Like the Chevy Volt when it launched with 40 miles of electric range, that was like the perfect car on paper for every person in the US. Except it didn't have that middle seat that really bumped people out. You can only put four in it. Okay, that, that's a good point. But the transit, I fear, might be one of those things. And I'm hoping that like fleet operators are a little bit more left brain, right? Left, left brain, yeah, they're left more brain, analytic. Where they look at the data and be like, well, our fleet driver's only driving 49 miles every day. Um, but the range is pretty limited, it's like 80, so. So, but we'll see. That was pretty cool. Yeah, it was a, it was a good show. Not a lot of major reveals, but you got to see some stuff in person again, which I thought was quite nice. Yeah, the other we got to see uh, the uh, 
Expedition Timberline. Yep. That was pretty cool. So Ford is busy timberline, you know, like Subaru is busy wildernessing everything. Ford is busy timberlining everything. Yep, that's the off roady uh, trim. That's the off roady trim, and I'm, I'm, I'm loving that. I think it's really cool. You know, if you need a big three row and you want to go off road, this may not be a bad. And then we also got to see the uh, Lincoln version of that, the Navigator, which I'm going to go drive next week, Tommy. I'm going to go drive the new Navigator. Wahoo! Love it. Love it. Very cool. I'm really excited. What are you driving? What's coming up for you? I am going to go drive police cars. You are? Yes. Oh, I'm actually very excited about motorcycles, this. And motorcycles, right? We're doing something with the California Highway Patrol, uh -huh. and they are inviting us out to their training facility to go zip around in the police car. So these include, like, the Chargers. Andre's coming with. He's going to do the trucks and, like, the Tahoe. Yeah. Uh, so it'll be very cool to see what those are like in person. Uh, always wanted to drive a police car. That'll be cool. Uh, let's see so what else. I'm doing a bunch of crazy stuff. Well, you're going to... Do, do the Navigator next week. Then I'm going to do this. Get this. I'm going to go to Willow Springs, Big Willow, and drive the uh, GT4 RS. Like, this is... If you're a Porsche file, uh, this potentially is better and faster and quicker than a 911. Finally, like, Porsche has given the Cayman, right, which is what it is, the Boxster. Uh, it's like... Sports car, Club of America stamp, and really like 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 actually having it compete head to head with the 911. So a lot of people are saying that the GT4 RS is actually a better car than the 911 uh, RS. Well, or GT3, whichever one you want. Well, you know maybe Jerry GT3 Seinfeld RS. will watch your, your review. Sorry, GT, yeah, Jerry Seinfeld can watch my review, right? <laughs> yeah. All right, Jerry, if you're watching my review, the and, big and, Porsche guy, and, and you're bored of ya. and you're bored of Spike. <laughs> yeah. And you want to you want to kind of go down market instead of talking about. Uh, uh, Rolexes and hey, cigars and whiskey. You can come here and talk about Priuses. beer and maybe he's in potato the, chips and Priuses. Maybe he's in the Priuses. <laughs> Who knows? All right. Actually, we don't even talk about beer. Talk about iced tea. Uh, so if you're into iced tea and, you know, the, 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 the less refined things in life, we are here for you, Jerry. We are here. Um, yeah, something tells me that that's not going to happen. You've been listening to Spike's podcast? Yeah, he does a great podcast. I love his podcast. It's very, very Porsche-centric. Yeah, but he does a great job with it. I think it's very entertaining, and he does some good guests on. Yeah. Um, yeah. Absolutely. So I, what else is going on? You're going to go drive the Navigator? Yeah, and then I'm going to Europe. Yeah, you're going to go do some fun stuff in Europe, yeah. too. Yeah, I'm going to um, go drive the electric Nissan in Madrid, Tommy. Okay, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah that, that should be, that's a dream trip. And, and the Ionic on a glacier, Ionic 5 on a glacier. Wow, what an what a, what a opportunity. And then I will be here freezing my butt off. But what, what do we got coming? We got a bunch of cool cars oh, coming. Oh, you know what you get to do? I'm jealous while I'm driving, uh, what? Yeah, I've got a lot of cool reveals coming up. You can't talk about it? I can't it, talk about it. Uh, we don't like to, we don't like to no, use we, the E word, uh, the embargo rule, because we don't, I hate that on other podcasts. I, I know, but I can't talk about it. But that's what I'm saying. It was my fault. I shouldn't have brought it up. Like, a legally, cool I could coming. get sued. <laughs> we didn't say anything. I'm, I'm going to get look, guys, sued. Oh, jeez. I, I, I listened to a lot of podcasts. No, this is nothing. Don't, don't. Just oh, chill, wow. chill. What a mess. Chill, chill. Uh, we listen to a lot of podcasts, and I always hate when on a podcast they say, hey, we're going to go do this, but embargo, we can't drive up talk about it. So we don't just, if we can't talk about it, we don't bring it up. So I apologize. Okay. So going to go see something cool. Yeah. Um, and then we got a lot of cool cars coming to the office, which is very exciting. So this week we have the Toyota Corolla Cross, mm -hmm. which is a little compact Toyota SUV. And we're, me and Nathan are going to go take that to the ranch tomorrow, and we've got snow. All-wheel drive. I yes. think it's a lovely little thing. Then on Thursday, we're getting two heavyweights. We're getting the Mercedes-Benz S-Class and the Mercedes EQS. So we're going to compare old versus new, past versus future. Well, they're both brand new. Right, but one is electric and one is not. Right. So right. That, that'll be that's cool. That's cool. So yeah. the, Thank the you, electric S-Class and the gas S-Class, essentially, that's going to be super cool. Uh, lots of other fun cars coming up, too, including the Miata and the... You're getting a Miata? Yeah, and the oh. GT86, Toyota. Finally. Yeah, we'll give him the Paul, see, see what he thinks. And no, then... Paul, Paul went on the program. I didn't get to go on the program. I've never driven Well, you car. don't know much about Miata. You don't fit in a Miata. What are you going to do driving a Miata? No, you don't fit the in the thing. the GT86. I didn't get to drive it yet. But the idea is you do like a side-by-side -side cool like chirp, skirt. Put it on the track? Is that what you That's what I'm saying. Okay, all right, yep. put it on the track. So that's coming up. Um, some other electrified products coming as well. So all sorts of fun stuff going on. Andre's getting... Oh, uh, the biggest fun thing is we, we'll talk about Andre's this. getting a Rebel we GT. Bought, we, we've been buying cool cars. So we bought uh, three cars recently. We're spending money like three. Yeah, three. Oh, three. Yeah, we, oh, well, two of them are like okay. One of them. Three trucks, I should say. Yeah, one of them is not exactly so we're, a we're, museum. So piece. as you know, as you know, we are 
uh, doing a video series called uh, No Paper Needed. And mm -hmm. the first part of that series was we bought three trucks for 5000 and then took them. What did we do with those three? I've already forgot. What uh, did we do with those? So it was very cool. Check it out on YouTube. Where did we go with I those three remember. trucks? I think it's Moab. I think you took it on yeah, Hell's Revenge. I think we took it to Moab. Yeah, Hell's Revenge. We did Hell's Revenge with those. And then we said, let's do it for less money. Mm -hmm. So we called it for a few bucks less, mm -hmm. no payment needed. And we uh, bought uh, uh, three very cheap vehicles, including a Jeep for 2500 and took them up and over Imogene. Yep. And now we're going big time. We're, go we're calling it going big. And we bought an excursion. And yesterday I bought a vehicle that you wanted that I thought was a – a bit of a, a pile, but you said it was a good pile, so it's yours now because you're going to be featured in it. What do we buy? Well, it's a it's a 99 Suburban. It's the last year of the square body Suburban before they kind of went roly-poly. Oh boy, this is where Jerry Seinfeld just checks right out. <laughs> yeah, <we're> uh, never... <laughs> but, yeah, it's uh, it's very dirty, and it's um, it's not as, as mechanically sorted as I once thought. I'll put it that way. Um, but I, I'm hoping a lot of the weird driving behaviors are down to the completely bald tires. Should we talk about like Philip Patak or Patika? Is that, that, is that what we should be? You don't even know what that I is. I don't right? know what that is. I, I just mispronounced like the most expensive watch name ever. Well, I don't know what that means. Yeah, yeah. Philip Patak. Okay. Patik. Yeah, that's like, that's like this very expensive French Swiss watch. I'm so, just trying to get Jerry back in the conversation. Yeah, he's long gone. So were you wearing that <laughs> So the the a submariner uh, the, no the four grand uh, the four thousand dollars suburban was not was not being we, worn with any watches. We, we spend less money on a suburban than most. I don't even think Jerry's into watches. I don't think he's a oh, watch he is. guy. Oh, he is. Yeah, yeah. Are yeah, you yeah, sure? Yeah, watch Seinfeld. Look at well, look at his wrist when you watch Seinfeld. He was at the show. Well, you you'll have to leave a comment, watch, Jerry, whether or not watch, you're watch into watches. Watch Seinfeld and look at his wrist and see what watches he's wearing. You do. Philip, I think Philip, 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 you you are just jealous of his incredible Porsche collection. He does have a phenomenal Porsche I'm collection. Just, I'm just saying we probably spend less money on that suburban than Jerry would spend on a watch band. That's true. But then we. He, but know. he also has like a bunch of cool Porsches, which I'd love to talk well, to him about. Well, he's also incredibly creative and just oh you know, yeah, he's one, brilliant. Created one of the best series. Yeah, we're, we're a long ways out we're, from Jerry. We're a long ways out. <laughs> Got a long way to go. <laughs> From that amount of like, like you creativity know, creativity and and you know, talent. hard work and talent. Yeah. yeah. All right. So more power to those guys if they can afford. It. I'm not trying. To, I'm just. I'm just saying. I'm not trying to diss their watch love. No, no, no. I, I get it. Um, but uh, yeah, I like the suburban a lot. Hey, I what do, watch are you wearing? You're wearing something cool. I well, it's a it's a, it's a Casio. You're wearing a Casio. Show yes. it. Put it up. Uh, this is the this is the Casio G-Shock, <laughs> and I like it particularly because it tells the time. That, so, that's what it does the best. So, so this is a company called what? Teddy? Uh, Teddy Baldazar. Yeah, they sent it to us, and they, we said, we'll show it, and if people like it, then they can. It is quite nice. I don't know much about watches, but it does. it's got a light on it. It shows the date. It shows the time. I, I look, and not, it's G-Shock. I mean, it, this thing is beefy. They're not sponsors of ours, but I'm trying to get them to sponsor it because I, I think that there's this. <laughs> no, let, wait, hold on. Rolex has a strong. You were all about like, oh, we don't know much about big expensive watches that's not a big expense how no. much that's like a hundred dollar watch it's 110 so bucks go to, go to teddy balazar baldazar Baldazar. Yeah. okay sorry teddy and how much how much uh, we have a what, code i think it's tfl 10 10 yeah. percent off your g-shock watches okay. and we're not, look guys they're not sponsoring us but we're trying to get them as a sponsor so i said what we do is we would do a couple tiktoks and now i just do a, did a shout out maybe they want to sponsor us because, because I will there's say, a connection between – look, I believe there's a connection between cars and watches. That's all. The G-Shock is very good at being durable. Like yeah. this is the kind of – this is the kind of watch that you'd want to take off-road. It, it, it has proven to be incredibly robust. Yeah, so that's I, been the best part of it. I don't think Spike it. would wear that or Johnny. You'd be surprised actually. They talk about G-Shock sometimes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They've never – Yep, they brought it up in conversation. G-Shock has never th – that word Casio and G-Shock has never left They're those good guys. watches. They're good watches. They respect has a good never, watch. Has never left their They mouths. respect a good watch. No. This is a quality item. I, I'm telling you. They have, they have, this is not even on their radar. This is a good item anyway. G-Shock watches. All right. Strong proponent. Well, uh, there you go. We've uh, wasted another hour of your time. No, you can't say that. That's a car talk. Oh, is that a car talk thing? See, that's why Jerry yeah. is so clever. He, he comes up with his own thing. So what's what's our end? Do we have like a little catchphrase? No, but we'll just say goodbye. Oh, there's got to be something. Nope, that's it. Show's over. All right, <laughs> All see you right. next week. See you next week. Ciao. Bye.